For this new tutorial series, we'll be making a simple HTTP server in Java. Something like a very, very simple Apache server. So is this really needed? Is this going to be a groundbreaking HTTP server? Not really. It's just a cool little project that will allow us to play with networking, multi-threading, reading files, some cool technology. So to follow along this tutorial series, you need to be a Java programmer. You don't need to be an advanced one. You need to be at least comfortable with the syntax and be used to looking at Java code. So a beginner level will be fine. More advanced topics are covered already on some other videos of this channel. But while we are developing the server, I'll give it a brief overview of what of the technologies that we are working with of some of the core concepts. So don't worry too much. You'll probably be fine. It's also helpful to know Maven, or at least what Maven is. We'll be using it to manage some of the dependencies on this project. Stuff like uh, text parsers that we won't be coding from scratch because they're really out of scope for what we are doing. And we really don't want to be concerning ourselves with that right now. So to start our project, I'm going to be using IntelliJ. I use this ID, but you can use any other that you like. Just click Create New Project and I select the Maven type of project. It's usually in Java, but for this project, we're gonna use Maven. We are not gonna choose any archetype over here, so we'll just leave it empty. And we are going to give it the group ID that we want. In my case, it's gonna be Coda from scratch, which is the package that I'll be using. And the artifact is basically the name that you're going to identify this project with. You can choose whatever name you like, as long as it's as it's lowercase. And if you need to use any spaces, you use a dash. I'm just going to call it simple HTTP server. And I'm just going to put the name right. OK. As for the version, we'll leave it 0 0.1 or 1.0 snapshot. No particular reason, because it's going to be a development version. So we'll leave it as snapshot. And the prob the Project location, you choose whatever you want in your file system. Let's go. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to enable auto import. This is important because as we modify the POM file over here to add dependencies or to even make uh, small configurations on the way that we want the project to build, we want the IDE to read those changes straight away and apply them to your environment where we are working with. So for example, if I put here the dependencies now, for some reason, I'm just gonna write a comment. If I add here like a Maven de dependency now, the IDE is gonna read it straight away, it's gonna import it, and it's going to be made available to my code. Dependencies, like so, yeah. So we'll leave it like that. We won't, won't put any dependencies right now. So let's jump right in. So the first thing that we need to do is we're going to have to have a driver class. Yeah, something that will start the HTTP server running. So the first thing is straight away, we're going to create a package, which is where we are going to place all your code. My package is going to be com.coder from scratch.http server. And my driver class is going to call is going to be called http server like so. So, it being a, a driver class, it needs to have a main method, so we'll create that now, public static void main that takes as input a string array called args like so and just for debugging purposes and line we're gonna make it print a line we're gonna say server starting three dots i go on top of main i right click on my mouse and i do this run HTTP server main. When I do this, two things happen straight away. First, it compiles and runs my code, as you can see here. If 
but it also creates a running configuration, which is what we have here. This allows me to run the code by just simply clicking this play button. Having this running configuration also help, allows me to use the debugger, this other button over here. This debug feature is going to be useful later on when things don't work out properly. When the code starts producing results that don't match what we expected. You'll see. So let's also write a comment here. WHTP server. And we'll just leave it like that for the moment. This was the easy part. Now we need to think a little bit about how does an HTTP server work? How does it do what it does? What components does it require for it to perform it, its tasks? So the HTTP server is going to be at the very least just a plain old computer. But because it is a server, it needs to be connected to a network from where it gets a request from. The HTTP server needs to be listening for requests on that network, at least in one port. Regular unencrypted traffic usually happens on port 80, and encrypted traffic will happen on port 443. This is the simplest scenario, but you can obviously make it listen to any other port that you'd like. Then, a person surfing the web comes along with his web browser, types the address for your server, hits the return key, and the browser creates a connection through that network to the server. After the connection is established, the browser creates the request message to send to the server and shoots that message through the connection. The server receives that message and tries to make sense of what the browser wants. It's usually some file someplace on the file system. This folder on the file system is most times referred to as the web root. It is a specific folder where the server has access and permissions to retrieve files from and send over to the clients. The server searches for the file that satisfies the request, composes a response based on that file, and shoots the response to the client through the connection that was already established. After the sending of the response is complete, the browser will do whatever it needs to do, and the server will close that connection. If further connections are needed from the browser for other files, the browser reopens the connections and makes further requests. So, to wrap up, we've already identified a couple of systems that we need to implement. We've said that the server can listen to a port and that that port can be configurable. So we need to have a way to read configuration files. So that's one of the systems that we'll need to do. We need to define how are we going to write those configuration files? What's the semantics, all of that? We also need to make the server listen to a port. So that's the system itself. How many connections is the server going to handle? Managing those connections. Are we going to be multi-threaded? If we're going to handle multiple connections, we'll need to be multi-threaded. Then we need to do the HTTP protocol bit. We need to handle messages. We need to be able to read them, pass them, understand what's going on, what the client is requesting. When a client is requesting a file, we need to go to the file system, to a specific location, read files. And finally, we need to reply to the client. We need to send them a response message. We need to be able to compose them, make it make sense, make it compliant with the HTTP protocol. But we'll see all this when we get to it. On the next video, we'll start working on the configuration system. We'll be using JSON and we'll write our configuration files in JSON. We'll make a configuration manager that will read those JSON files and extract the information from them. Don't forget to subscribe to get notified of when new videos come out.